Hello and welcome. In this video, we want to learn how we can find limits at infinity for exponential functions. The first example is find the limit of e to the power of x. Probably e to the x is the most famous function between exponential functions. And you know that e is Euler number, which is approximately 2.7 so we have a number which you can estimate it by 2.7 raised to the x so it is an exponential function you should be familiar probably with exponential functions we want to find limit of this function when x approaches positive infinity and once when x approaches negative infinity we want to find these two limits I highly recommend you memorize the graph of the exponential function e to the x. Graph of e to the x is something like this. So this is the graph of the function y equals e to the x. As you can see from the graph of e to the x, when we go far to the right, when x approaches infinity, the, the y value of this function goes to infinity. When we go far to the right, which means that x goes to infinity, e to the x, the y value of this function goes to infinity. So limit of e to the x when x approaches infinity is infinity. So the answer of the first limit is infinity but what is the limit of e to the x when x approaches negative infinity now we have to look this way what happens to this graph of e to the x if we go far to the left as you can see here when we go to the left the graph of e to the x goes this way and it approaches the x-axis the distance between the graph of e to the x and the x-axis gradually decreases so we can conclude that the limit of e to the x when x approaches negative infinity is zero so the second limit is zero and again why this limit is zero because attention to the distance between graph of e to the x and the x-axis, this distance here gradually decreases. When we go far to the left, this distance is almost zero. So the limit is zero. Attention, this distance is never zero, but we can say that the limit of that is zero. Limit of e to the x when x approaches negative infinity is zero. And you can always remember these two limits simply if you remember graph of e to the x. So instead of memorizing these limits, it's better to always have graph of e to the x in your head and memorize it. And then you can answer different questions. And attention. Not only graph of e to the x is like this. Graph of many exponential functions are like this. In general, we can say that this is graph of any exponential function like 2 to the x, 5 to the x, 10 to the x. But this is important that the base of your exponential function should be greater than 1. So as long as the base of the exponential function is any number greater than 1, like 2, 5, 10, and so on, the graph is the same, and so we have similar rules for them. But if b is not greater than 1, is less than 1, is between 0 and 1, it would be different, the graph of b to the x. But mostly, when we have exponential functions, the base of them is greater than 1, so we can use this graph for them. Now look at these questions. What is limit of, let's say, 3 to the x when x approaches negative infinity? 
because x approaches negative infinity and the graph of 3 to the x is similar to the e to the x so what is this limit because x goes to negative infinity the limit is zero what is limit of 5 to the power of 2x when x approaches infinity when x approaches infinity 2x goes to infinity and so basically we have this case the base is 5 is greater than 1 and so the graph is similar to e to the x limit is also infinity so this limit equals infinity now look at this question what is limit of 7 to the power of x to the 2 plus x when x goes to infinity again because x goes to infinity this power is infinity and 7 to the infinity is infinity so only you need to remember this graph and you can answer all of these questions when the x power is infinity the limit is infinity when the power is negative infinity the limit of that exponential function is zero now let's do some harder examples we want to find limit of e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x all over e to the x minus e to the negative x as x goes to infinity when x approaches infinity we know that remember from here limit of e to the x is infinity and limit of e to the x if x approaches negative if the exponent here it goes to negative infinity the limit of that is zero but considering these things look at here when x approaches infinity the power here is infinity so this goes to infinity but when x approaches infinity negative x approaches negative infinity so basically this approaches zero so between these two terms in numerator this term is the dominant term and this term approaches zero so we can ignore it and similar thing we have in denominator between e to the x and e to the negative x in denominator e to the x is the dominant term because it goes to infinity but e to the negative x approaches zero but if you do this limit in this way to say that we keep e to the x in numerator and e to the x from denominator and we ignore these terms because the limit of this and limit of this is zero if you do this limit in this way and from this you conclude that the limit is one your answer is one but your show work maybe is not enough the limit of this expression is one but how we can do this question in a better way let me rewrite the question again if you remember from limits of rational functions when we have rational functions rational functions are functions that in numerator we have polynomial in denominator also we have polynomial for finding limits of such functions we divide numerator and denominator by highest degree of denominator but here we don't have polynomials but we can use same idea to find these limits here look at the denominator and try to find between the two terms that is in the denominator which one is the dominant term we can say the highest degree because here we don't have polynomials but you can think it this way between this term and this term which one is significant or if you want to compare it with polynomials which one is the one with highest degree if you remember when x approaches infinity this is infinity this is zero so this term is obviously the dominant term or significant term in the denominator so for finding this limit we are going to divide every term in numerator and every term in denominator by 
highest degree by the term that has the highest degree in denominator, which is e to the x. So we divide every term by e to the x. So e to the x over e to the x, e to the negative x over e to the x, and same thing in denominator. And x approaches infinity. Now by doing this, we have limit of 1 plus e to the negative 2x. In a moment, I will explain you why this becomes e to the negative 2x. e to the x over e to the x is 1. e to the x over e to the x is 1. And e to the negative x over e to the x is e to the negative 2x. Why? Because, attention, we have e to the negative x over e to the x. When we have division between power expression, we can write one of the bases and subtract the power. So this equals to e to the negative x minus x. And this equals e to the negative 2x. Now, attention to the numerator and denominator. In numerator, we have 1 plus e to the negative 2x. The power of this exponential expression here when x approaches infinity, the power here goes to negative infinity because of this negative here. And so we have basically this case. Limit of e to the x when x approaches negative infinity is 0. When the exponent, the power of exponential function goes to negative infinity, the limit of that exponential function is 0. So here, the limit of e to the negative 2x is 0. And also in the denominator, limit of e to the negative 2x is 0. So this equals to 1 plus 0 over 1 minus 0. And so the limit equals 1. But of course, you can use the other method, which I showed you here, to ignore these terms and just keep the dominant terms. Let me show you one more example. Find limit of 3 to the power of x plus 2 to the power of x over 3 to the power of x minus 2 to the x when x approaches infinity. Again, because this is like a rational function, we are going to divide every term in the top and every term in the bottom by the dominant term. Between 3 to the x and 2 to the x, which one is between these two terms? Which one is the dominant term? Which one is the expression that grows faster? 3 to the x because the base is greater. So we are going to divide every term in numerator and every term in denominator by 3 to the x. Then we have this. And x approaches infinity. 3 to the x over 3 to the x is 1. So we have 1 plus 2 to the x over 3 to the x can be written as one exponential function like this, 2 third to the x. And also we can do same thing in the denominator and we can write it this way. Now, x goes to infinity. So the exponent here goes to infinity. So maybe you think that you will have exponential function that the exponent goes to infinity. So the limit of this is infinity. But attention, here, the base of this exponential expression here, the base is two thirds, is less than one. And when the base of exponential function is less than one, if the exponent goes to infinity, limit of that expression is zero. If you remember graph of e to the x or any exponential function is like this, but we had a condition here. If the base is greater than one, the graph is like this. If the base of the exponential function, if the base of the exponential function b to the x is a number between 0 and 1, like 1 half, 2 over 3, numbers between 0 and 1, the graph would be 
like this. And as you can see, if we attention to this new graph, when we go far to the right, this function approaches zero. And in opposite, when we go far to the left, the graph of this function goes to infinity. So now here, in this limit, we have a number that is less than one. When, when it raises to x and x goes to infinity, the limit of that is zero. So we have one plus zero over one minus zero and it equals one. Let me explain in a, another way that why the limit of two thirds to the x is zero. When x goes to infinity, it means that we want to multiply two thirds by itself infinite times. When we multiply a number by another number that is less than one, and by another number that is less than one, gradually we get a smaller and a smaller and a smaller numbers. So eventually we get zero. So the limit of two thirds to the x, x approaches infinity is zero. And so the limit of this function when x approaches infinity is one. I hope by watching this video, you have learned how to find limits at infinity for exponential functions.